Hey guys, it's Bub here, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at ParaOS Snow Mojave. A few months ago, I took a look at ParaOS Cupertino, which was a relatively good Linux clone of macOS. However, the best macOS clone I've tried is iBuntu. In my opinion, iBuntu 2.0 was simply a way better clone of macOS than ParaOS ever was. However, in the comments of that iBuntu video, many people recommended me to try ParaOS Snow Mojave. So in this video, we'll be installing it, taking a look at it, and seeing what really is different from that version of iBuntu and even ParaOS Cupertino. Now, ParaOS Snow Mojave is actually based on Kubuntu, I believe, so it's not actually using Ubuntu, and the developer said that being based off of Kubuntu is simply it makes it faster and things like that, because Kubuntu is way more lighter than Ubuntu. Here, we can see on the boot up of the live ISO, here is the Kubuntu logo. Obviously, they haven't changed this in the live CD, but that's okay as long as it's changed once it's actually installed. Alright, so here we are on the ParaOS Snow Mojave install menu. So the first thing we can notice is that we have that macOS style maximize, minimize thing, so they really got that here. But what I find a little bit interesting is we have try install or install install. So I guess they changed something to install because it should say try ParaOS or install ParaOS. But we're of course just going to simply go and install. We're going to go ahead and just choose our standard things, blah 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 blah. So this installation is basically exactly like the Kubuntu, it's nothing really special. The Big Sur version of this was ParaOS Cupertino. This is going to look a little bit more like the legacy version of macOS, like Mojave, like in the name, or Catalina. So it's not like Big Sur. So we finally gotten into the actual login screen of ParaOS, that took about 10 minutes to install. So right off the bat, we can see this really doesn't look anything like macOS. It has sleep, restart, shutdown, and other, which allows us to log into a domain, I assume. But we're going to go ahead and just go ahead and log into the user account that we created. And right away, we'll be brought into the ParaOS desktop, which right here we can see that ParaOS Apple-like loading screen. And there are credits down here, so credits to ALXB down there. And here is our desktop. So right off the bat, we can see that this is very much like macOS. We have a dock that acts exactly like macOS. We have the top bar that, while nothing's open, it is missing the finder file, blah, blah, blah. Or finder now shows up. Maybe that was a glitch. Off first glance, this looks extremely like macOS. It is, just off the bat, much more fluent. Windows do move around like that. I don't remember what that is called. I know that's a certain extension that you can add. I don't remember what it's called, though. But all right, let's take a look in our launch pad and see what we have pre-installed. The App Store, Arc Calendar, Document Viewer, iTunes, which is also Elisa, I guess they changed it. The Finder, Web Browser, Gwen View, iBus, Info Center, Input, Kate, KCalc, Partition Manager, the Terminal, the Conversation, which I guess is a version of some kind of messaging client, KPatients, KRDC, we have a game, we have KSysGuard, KSystemLog, KTorrent Latte, um, our Office Suite. We have Maps, a Package Manager, NVIDIA X Server Settings, which I don't have an NVIDIA GPU at the moment, so I'm not sure why that's installed. Ocular, Pafari, ripoff of Safari, the Pear Extension Installer, Integrated Development something, Pulse Audio Volume Control, Rhythm Box, Scan Light, Spectacle, the Disk Creator, the System Settings, Terminal, Thunderbird, USB, and VLC. So overall, we do have a lot of things that I feel like are unnecessary pre-installed, but overall, it doesn't really have that much bloatware and things like that. So we can just go ahead and take a look at these basic apps in the dock. So the Finder itself just glitched out. So the Finder itself looks extremely like the one found on macOS. It has the macOS icons. It doesn't 100% match what we have on macOS, but it's pretty close. I guess the Pear Cloud is their own version of iCloud. I'm not entirely sure about that, but I do remember seeing something ab about Pear Cloud on ParaOS Cupertino. The tags don't actually work unless I'm missing something. I'm not sure how that is really supposed to work, but I guess it's just a blank folder. I'm really interested to see what Pafari is. Oh, here we go. Pafari is this app. They just changed the name of it. and. I'm not sure what's wrong with the network connection, but I am having some problems loading anything, really. Or there we go, finally. Okay, so I just click Quit Latte on my dock, and now it is gone. 
so I guess I have to start that up again. Yeah, that is the dock. So the latte is the actual dock. There we go. We've successfully brought our dock back. So just a hint, don't right click and quit because that won't end up well. Our contacts is just a standard contacts app. The calendar is a regular calendar app, which really, really, really copies the one that is seen on Mac OS. I mean, this is almost identical. The USB utility is, I really have never seen this before. Okay, so the USB utility is basically like a, I don't know what to call this, partition manager, something for uh, USB. Okay, I'm not sure how to close this because I can't close it. I can't click the button because it's locked behind the top bar. So that'll just stay open in the background. I can't close it from down here because it won't let me. The calculator, they didn't really clone that from Mac OS, which I get. I mean, I guess that would be a little hard to clone. I'm really interested to see what we have here. So the iTunes clone is actually just Rhythm Box, but I thought it was something different. Elisa? I guess there are two different music players installed on this OS. That's a little interesting. And they both have the same icon. That is okay. Oh, there we go. We can close them that way. So what's actually in the taskbar is just the package manager. It's not the actual app store. I would have pinned the app store to the taskbar, but or the dock, but I mean, I guess they didn't. I have no clue what kind of app store this is about. This is Discover. Okay, I've never heard of that, but it is okay. So as long as they have some of like the most basic apps, like, I don't know, let's just look up Chrome or something. I don't know if Chrome is actually on. Okay, so they do have Discord on here. So, I mean, they seem to have a decent amount of apps on here. I really don't know how this app store works. I've never even heard of it. The NVIDIA X server settings. I have no clue why this is on here. I don't have an NVIDIA GPU, but it seems to not really have anything in it. Taking a look up here, we can see our network usage, our networks, our actual volume controls, which, okay, so using the volume buttons on my keyboard, they do have a version of macOS's volume control, which I think is actually pretty good. Bluetooth is up there. It does show a battery, even though this is a desktop, so I guess they couldn't figure out a way to disable the battery if it's there's no battery. Our calendar is right here. This does not look like the one that is seen in macOS, but that's completely fine. The search is right there, although this looks like a search that was found in an older, older version, because typically if you click the search there, it would bring up the spotlight search in the middle. And finally, there is this, which if you click on the desktop and open other applications, this doesn't close. You have to close it manually, which is a little bit annoying. I would change the opacity of this a little bit. I would make it a little bit less transparent because it's a little bit hard to read. But finally, let's take a look inside of this readme file just to see what they have to say. Okay, so hello user. Hope you enjoy ParaOS. There are still a few bugs in this distro, which is totally fine. We've already seen a few. So this was ParaOS Snow Mojave. Overall, it is a very refined, very snappy version of ParaOS. I personally prefer this over ParaOS Cupertino, as I tried that about eight months ago. I really feel like this nailed it more than ParaOS Cupertino did, and overall I just like the UI of this better than I did that. There are obviously still a few bugs that need ironed out, but other than that, I really like this version, and I would actually consider using this as my daily driver if I didn't have access to a Mac. So. With that being said, thank you for watching this video. If you had any other comments on this Linux distribution, definitely let me know down below, as I will be very happy to respond to them and kind of see what you guys have to say about it. Make sure to subscribe if you're new around here, as I do all kinds of different technology videos and device restorations. And with that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.